Hola, this is the Unit 1 review for Spanish 1. Please keep in mind this is not to substitute for your actual lessons or for uh, directions from your classroom teacher. Any directions from your classroom teacher supersede any information here. This is just meant as a review, a general review, as you prepare to take the Unit 1 test. So let's begin. Los saludos. Los saludos is greetings in Spanish. What are different ways to say hello and when are they used? So think about things like buenos días, buenas tardes, or buenas noches. Buenos días means good morning. Since días is masculine, día, el día, the day is masculine. Um, good morning is buenos días. And the afternoon is la tarde. So good afternoon is buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. La tarde is feminine, so buenas is feminine as well. Buenas noches is good evening, if it's later in the evening. Buenas noches. And noche is also feminine. So, buena, bueno becomes buena to match the gender of noche. And it's also plural. So, these are three different ways to greet a person depending on the time of day. Now, how do you ask how somebody is doing? You would say, como esta or como estas. And you should know the difference between usted, which is you, in a formal sense. It's a singular you. And tú, which is also singular, and it means you in English, but it's familiar. So use tú with people you would call by their first name or with your relatives, with your family. Use usted for people you would address with their last name. So teacher and some kind of official or um, a friend's parent, you would address them with usted in Spanish. Now, these, these are both singular. The plural would be ustedes, and we'll look at that later on, uh, later on in, in the course. But for now, como esta is the usted form, it's formal, and como estas is the familiar form. Los nombres. How do you give your name? How do you ask somebody for his name? Well, to give your name, you would say, me llamo. Me llamo. Or you could say, mi nombre es. Or you could actually simply say, soy in your name. Be careful, it's, it is not me llamo es. It's just me llamo. Me llamo actually means I call myself. And mi nombre es means my name is. Literally translated. So those are two different ways. And then you could use soy for the third way to, to introduce yourself and to, to give your name. Now, if you ask somebody their name, remember that you're asking a person. So it would either be the tu form or the usted form. The person you talk to, you're going to have to decide which to use. And if you're really not sure, just use the usted form anyway. And that way, the person can correct you. But at least you're showing too much respect rather than not enough. So with somebody that is uh, a younger person, that you would call by their first name, if you knew it, you would say, ¿Cómo te llamas? This would be for a peer at the school. This could be for a, uh, a college student. This could be for a relative. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? Now, if you speak to an adult uh, that is not part of your family, you will say, ¿Cómo se llama? ¿Cómo se llama? And you can actually put the usted at the end of the question as well. ¿Cómo se llama usted? Or ¿Cómo te llamas tú? Either way. Now, how do you say it's a pleasure to meet somebody? When somebody gives you your name, somebody gives you their name, excuse me, you, you would say, it's a pleasure. In English, we would say, it's a pleasure, it's nice to meet you. In Spanish, you would say, mucho gusto, mucho gusto. Now, if somebody says that to you after meeting you, then you could reply with igualmente. Igualmente means the same here. All right? You're just saying, uh, you know, it's uh, the pleasure's mine. You know, you're giving the uh, reciprocal answer 
a response to mucho gusto. So you could say it first, or if the other person says it first, you could say igualmente. It's also a pleasure for me to meet you. Los mandatos in a typical classroom. These are some commands you might hear. You should be familiar with these. Levantense. Levantense. This is plural, a plural command. Get up or stand up. Levantense. Siéntense means sit down. And again, it's addressed to more than one person. That's like a teacher addressing a classroom of students. Siéntense, sit down or be seated. Abren los libros. Open, literally open the books, but open your books. Cierren los libros. Close, close your books or close the books, literally. Repitan means repeat. Repitan. Levanten la mano. Raise your hand. Levanten la mano. Um, and this is plural, so it would be like raise your hands, everybody. Levanten la mano. Saquen means take out. Take something out. Saquen. Saquen. Saquen papel. Saquen un lapis. Saquen un lapicero. Right? Take out a piece of paper, etc. Entreguen means turn in. Turn in. This is like turn in your work, turn in um, an assignment. Entreguen. And these are all commands. Los números, another thing you should know, is your numbers. Especially up through 20. And then we'll look at the other ones later on too, but we focus on 1 through 20 first. It's important that you know these and know some patterns here. From 1 through 10, of course, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now we get to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's 11 through 15. And you'll see the CE at the end of each of those. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And that is actually what's left of the 10, the 10. So 11 is 1 and 10, which is 11. 12 is 2 plus 10. And so on so we, until we get to 15, which is 5 y 10, right? 5 and 10. But then it turns around and we get from 16 through 20, 16 through 19, we get 10 first. So starting at 16, 16, 17, 18, 19. And that's how those work. 16 through 19 work the same way. And 11 through 15 work their own way. And then we get to 20. 20 is 20. 20. If you think of uh, getting a Starbucks drink, the 20 ounce drink is called a venti. Venti is Italian for 20. So maybe that can help you. Now, a continuación, los números, numbers continued. We have 30, which is 30. And for the ones, we just keep counting from 30 or from 20, 21, 22, etc. And 30 would be the same way, 31, 32, 33, etc., up through 39. For 40, you have 40, 50 is 50, 60 is 60, 70 is 70, 80, 80, 90, 90, 90, and 100 is 100. With all of these, the ones is just added on to the end uh, with the E in the middle. 65 will be 65. 77 is 77, etc. It is difficult for first year students to understand the difference between 60 and 70. They look so close, so there's only one letter difference. You can think of how the number 6 is 6 with two S's there, siete, seven, with an S and a T. Sesenta has the two S's, that's sixty. Setenta is like siete, right? Siete is seven, setenta is seventy. So maybe that can help you as well. La hora. La hora means time when you're talking about a specific time on the clock. So we should be able to tell time. How do you tell time? And how can you ask for the time? So these expressions are useful. Que hora es? Means, what time is it? Que hora es? Literally, what hour is it? 
KORS. And then to tell time, you would say, Es la una for one o'clock. Es la una. And you say, Es la una because it's singular, one, one hour. And it's feminine because hora is feminine. Then for three o'clock in the afternoon, you can say, Son las tres de la tarde. Son las tres, it's three o'clock. And notice how it becomes plural now because the hours are plural. So anything other than one on the clock is son. Unless we're talking about mid, mid, uh, midday, which is noon, or midnight, which we'll talk about later. But any other number, 2 through 12, is going to be son las. Son las tres de la tarde, 3 o'clock in the afternoon or 3 o'clock p.m. Son las seis y media de la mañana. It's 6.30 in the morning. So, de la tarde, de la mañana, de la noche. We have in the morning, afternoon, and night. Son las once y cinco. It's 11.05. So, for minutes, you can just say y with the, with the number of minutes. Son las once y cinco. Uh, if you want to subtract from the next hour, you can say menos. Son las siete menos diez would be 10 to 7, so that's 6.50. And then the last two we have is mediodía, medianoche. These are S because it's singular. Mediodía means midday, which is noon in English. And medianoche is midnight, the middle of the night. Notice mediodía is masculine, mediodía, but medianoche is feminine. El cuerpo, the body. What are the names of some basic parts of the body? Uh, you should know all these words. El cuerpo, which is the body. You think of words like corpse, corporal, a marine corps. All right, C-O-R-P-S. Those uh, words all come from French, actually, and have to do with the body. A, a corpus of, of uh, uh, written work. And we have that word, too. Okay, those are come from Latin and French, of course, uh, Latin through French or just from Latin. So el cuerpo is the body, the body itself. We have la cabeza, head, el brazo, arm. You'll notice that each one has the uh, article with it that indicates gender. And you can see that words that end in A usually are feminine. Words that end in O are usually masculine, where we've already seen an exception with el día, the day, which is masculine. La boca, mouth, la nariz, nose, and here's one that doesn't end in A or O, but you'll just have to memorize la nariz, that usually a lot of words that end in Z uh, tend, to be, tend to be feminine, but not all the time. El ojo is I. El ojo, I like what you see with el ojo. I always thought about ojo as it looks like two eyes and a nose there, or is a J. Maybe that can help you remember that. El dedo, dedo is a finger. And uh, another word for finger in, Egypt, in English is digit. So el dedo, el dedo can actually uh, be compared to the word digit. El pie. El pie is the foot, a foot. So you can think of like words like tripod or pedestrian, right? El pie is the foot. Uh, la pierna, la pierna is leg. El estómago, of course, is stomach. El estómago. La mano, mano is hand. And here's another exception. We have a word that ends in O, but it's feminine. So here it is an exception to the general rule. La mano is hand. La mano, you can think of English words like manual, manual labor, manual transmission, right? These are things done with hands. Maneuver. Me duele. Me duele is it hurts something like part of my body is hurting me. Me duele la cabeza means I have a headache. Me duele. Me duele el estómago. Right? My stomach is hurting. Uh, my stomach is, is aching. I have a stomach ache. Me duele el ojo. My eye hurts, etc. 
La escuela, here's some more vocabulary for common items around school. You should be familiar with these. El profesor or la profesora. You'll notice that uh, in many descriptions of people and professions, you're going to have a masculine and a feminine counterpart. So you should know both of those. Profesor and profesora. Notice also that profesor only has one S. Or in English, professor has two. Estudiante could be either masculine or feminine, depending on who you're talking about. So, el estudiante for a male student and la estudiante for a female student. The ending is the same. Como se dice means how do you say it? Como se dice? Como se dice? You might say, for example, como se dice student in español? How do you say student in Spanish? And somebody could say, se dice estudiante, right? You say student or it's student. Se dice. Se dice just means it's said. It's said. Como se dice? How is it said? How do you say it? El lapis is pencil. El lapis. Notice it is masculine. El libro. La mesa. La mesa is used for a desk. It could also be pupitre, but in Latin America, in Mexico, in, in uh, the United States, Spanish speakers usually use the word la mesa. La carpeta is a little bit of a what's called a false cognate. This is uh, not what it looks like. It looks like it should mean carpet, doesn't it? But la carpeta is a it's a type of folder. It's like a binder. La hoja de papel is a sheet of paper. Sheet of paper. Papel is masculine. Hoja is feminine. Hoja can be a sheet or a leaf on a tree. La hoja de papel. Lapicero or bolígrafo is a pen or la pluma. Lapicero is used often in um, in the United States and in Mexico. El cuaderno is a folder. El cuaderno. El calendario la fecha. The calendar and the date. How can you express a day and month on a calendar in Spanish? Well, you can say la fecha es. The date is. Or hoy es, today is, mañana es, is tomorrow, tomorrow is. So you have lunes, martes, miércoles, etc. You should know the days of the week. Lunes, uh, the, the, the week in Spanish begins with Monday. And the days of the week are not capitalized in Spanish. Lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo. Those are your seven days of the week. They are all masculine in Spanish because the word day is masculine. Now we get to the months. This is how you say the date. El 6 de enero is the 6th of January or January 6th. Or you can say febrero, which is February, marzo, abril, mayo, junio, julio, agosto, septiembre. Octubre, Noviembre, Diciembre. You should know your month. El primero de agosto. This is how you say the first of the month. El primero. El primero de. Every other day of the month is going to just be the number itself. This is where you're going to want to uh, know your numbers. Especially up to 30, 31. Right? El 25 de Diciembre. The 25th of, of December. Uh, which is Christmas, of course. Cuando es tu cumpleaños? When's your birthday? Cuando es tu cumpleaños? Uh, mi cumpleaños es, my birthday is, and then you can say the date. El primero de agosto, el seis de marzo, etc. You can also ask how many days are in a certain month. A certain month. ¿Cuántos días hay en febrero? How many days are there in February? ¿Cuántos días hay en julio? How many days are there in July? ¿Qué tiempo hace? What's the weather? This is how you um, ask what the weather's like in Spanish. ¿Qué tiempo hace? ¿Qué tiempo hace? It's uh, quite different than what we might say in English. It's quite different than what we might guess. ¿Qué tiempo hace? Tiempo Tiempo looks like time, and it does mean time. 
but it also can mean weather when it's used with hace, que tiempo hace. Often this just means the weather. Que tiempo hace. What's the weather like? Que tiempo hace. El hace literally means it makes. So what does the weather make? And so here's ways to express the weather and describe the weather. Hace sol. It's sunny. It literally, it makes sun. Hace calor. It's hot. It's a, it, it's, it's a high temperature today. It's hot outside. Hace frío. It's cold. It's cold out. And hace viento. It's windy. Nieva. It's snowing. And llueve. It's raining. Now you'll notice also when the word hace or que tiempo hace uh, that you're not pronouncing the H. You do not pronounce the H in Spanish. It's always silent. Hace viento. Now you'll notice a couple at the bottom of the list here. Nieva and llueve. There is no hace in these. And it's not an error. This is the way they're supposed to be. Nieva means it's snowing and it is a verb all by itself. Nebar is to snow in Spanish. It's the verb to snow. Nieva is the present tense. It's snowing. And llueve is the from the verb llover, which means to rain. So llueve, it's raining. It's raining. So those are two things that are their own verbs. Sol, calor, frío, viento are uh, nouns or adjectives. La primavera, uh, these are seasons. Seasons, the seasons are las estaciones. Las estaciones del año, seasons of the year. Primavera is spring. La primavera, you notice one is feminine, three are masculine. It's just the way it is. La primavera, el verano, el otoño, el invierno. Spring, summer, fall, and winter in order. Uh, now you would be able to express certain weather patterns in different seasons. For example, in la primavera, llueve mucho. Maybe you could say, for example, in the spring, it rains a lot. In la primavera, llueve mucho. En el verano, hace mucho calor. Right? In summer, it's very hot. En invierno, hace mucho frío. Right? In winter, it's very cold. So you can actually combine these together very easily in Spanish. Okay, so that's it. We talked about expressing the weather, expressing the date, and month and the day, talking about general uh, words that you'll, uh, general items that you'll find around school, some basic parts of the body, telling time, saying numbers, uh, typical classroom commands, how to give your name, and how to say pleased to meet you. And we also talked about saying hello, greeting somebody, and asking how they're doing. This will wrap it up for Unit 1. Gracias.